What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is a meteorologist known as the Dancing Weatherman. Nick Koser joins me on the podcast today. He has got a unique and entertaining way of delivering the weather forecast. It's an honor to have him on the show today. So go down there and smack that subscribe button, tap the like, and let's jump into it right now with the Dancing Weatherman, Nick Koser, on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father, Nick Koser. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Dude, such an honor to be here, man. I'm seeing your background, and I'm looking at all the cool, amazing fathers you've interviewed before, and I'm like, why do you choose me to be on this thing? <laughs> but well, I'm happy and excited, man. Let's do this. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. Let's start it like this. How many kids do you have? How old? I got one little dude. He is uh, 11. He actually just turned 11, and his first day of sixth grade was Monday. So he started junior high virtually, which is uh, definitely a new experience for all of us. Yeah, wild experience for all the parents out there. Uh, is he involved in any uh, sports or activities? You know, he is, um, he was, he was doing swimming and golf and um, he was doing well in both of those. And then COVID kind of shut all that down. Um, so at the moment, his, his his number one sport involvement is uh, the sports that he plays on Nintendo Switch. Uh, <laughs> so that's it. He's a he's a he's a thumb warrior right now. But, yeah, he's uh, not he's not he, and, he's not alone in that department for sure. <laughs> that's for dang <laughs> sure, especially not in the junior high school age group. Yeah, Nick, if you could please just take a minute here to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Yeah. Okay. So I am a, um, I'm a morning meteorologist and I've been doing this for gosh, 15 years now, which kind of makes me seem old. That's why I'm wearing the hat. So I'm covering up my gray hair. Uh, I graduated with, um, a communi- a communications degree in 2005 from Akron university in Ohio, which is the city LeBron James is from. That's like our claim to fame and, uh, got into the news business. Um, at first as a news reporter, didn't exactly know what I wanted to do in the business. Um, and then a, about a year into it, my boss was like, dude, you suck. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. And he goes, why don't we try you at weather and, and see if you're, uh, you know, and see if that's more your speed. And I swear to you, after two minutes of doing the weather, I go, why haven't I, why hasn't it dawned on me that I could make money doing this? I just never thought that you could make money predicting the weather. It, it, it woke this passion up in me that I had for weather that I never kind of, it was just kind of lying dormant. You know, I, I've always liked science. Anyways, long story short, after that, that day of filling in, um, I decided to go get my meteorology degree online from Mississippi State. I got it. And since then, I've been all around the country, uh, you know, moving up in my career. So I moved from Mansfield, Ohio, to Beaumont, Texas, to San Francisco, and then in the ultimate swerve of, of, of my life, I went from San Francisco, California, to Boise, Idaho, um, <laughs> <laughs> to, to kind of find a little more of a peaceful life. That was a little too peaceful. And then six years ago, we came here to Charlotte, and this is it, man. We, we love it here. I work on Good Day Charlotte, which is a morning show that runs from 4.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., and that's almost become my secondary job because now it seems like my first job is a professional dancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get to your dancing in just a second here. But so a lot, I mean, there's a lot of climates you went through here, a lot of different type of weather patterns in these different states and stuff like that. But so along this journey then, Nick, how old were you then when you first became a dad and how did becoming a father kind of change your perspective on life? Oh, man, I was I was 25. Um, so. Not too young, but still not too old. You know, I was still kind of kind of immature. And um, at the time that I was becoming a father, so I told you about all those moves, right? So the first move for me was the craziest because that was going from that that station in Ohio to Beaumont, Texas. I'd lived in Ohio my whole life, so for 25 years, that's all I knew. And um, you know, my wife and I got pregnant right before this huge move to Texas. So you know, I loaded up my, my Pontiac Grand Am with all my stuff, pulling a trailer. I was going to, to school full time to become a meteorologist, starting a new job in Texas, 
my wife was pregnant and also as part of my new job, they wanted us to uh, participate in a half marathon. Um, and so all of that was going on when, when, when my wife gave birth to, to uh, Cannon, who's, who's my son. And I got to tell you, man, I was overwhelmed. I was nervous. Um, all, all of the emotions I think everybody feels. And um, to be honest with you, I, I'm a little bit weird because I immediately thought of fatherhood, parenthood, as jumping to kind of where I'm at right now, which is having a, 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 a tween who's a little snarky, who kind of loves you but still hates you, <laughs> you know. And uh, to me, that was the that was all I could think about when it be when it, when it was uh, when I pictured being a father. So I actually thought the first part, the first few years of fatherhood were kind of not easy, but you know, I, I felt like the hard part of it hadn't started yet. I'm okay with doing the diapers and the feeding and all that. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised at how how cool it was, you know. Um, but obviously there are some lifestyle changes. I don't think it hit me as hard though because my whole life was changing right at that very second. When I was 25, I was kind of ready for it. Um, but I do look at things differently. I mean, the funny thing is it's, it's a small thing, but I now watch movies from the viewpoint of a parent and not the kid. Like I remember watching American Pie uh, as a father for the first time. And I remember watching that as a kid going, dude, this is hilarious. And as a father, I'm like, where are their parents? Why is there no supervision? What do they do? You know? So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll tell, I'll tell you what, Nick, I, I, on that one movie that, that changed that for me too, was John Q with, uh, with Denzel Washington. I don't know if you ever seen it, but I saw it before I was a father, and it was a, a good movie. I felt a little, you know, this it you know, it didn't have that emotional impact on me until I revisited that film once I became a father. So that definitely changed my perspective there. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny how that works, you know. So I mean, obviously now you're known as the dancing meteorologist here. What was the genesis of you uh, implementing these dance routines into your weather report? You know, boredom. Uh, actually, a few years ago, about. About two years ago, my bosses sat us all down, all of us talent, which are, is just a word for on-air people, um, and said, you got you to gotta have a bigger presence on social. You know, that's kind of how everything is branded and sold to the mass media, to the masses. And at first, I was like, gosh, here we go, you know, more work. Um, but eventually, I embraced it. And yeah, I was just, I was just bored at work one day. Uh, I saw... Some, some dudes, the Williams fam, if you're familiar with uh, them on, on Instagram, they're awesome. But I saw them dancing to the song and I go, I don't know, I think I could do that. I got nothing else to do. You know, it was a sunny day at work, so it was pretty quiet for me. I filmed it after the show. I did two takes, posted it on Instagram and, uh, you know, didn't think much. I went home, took a nap, which I always do because I wake up really early. And uh, I woke up from that nap, and my life hasn't been the same since, man. I woke up to a, a lot of comments, which were mostly positive, which for social media is kind of, kind of unheard of. And um, been doing, been doing it since. And I'm gonna do it until. I either run out of moves or people get tired of me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it, it, it's not the social media game is not an easy uh, a code to crack sometimes, especially on Instagram and TikTok, especially. And now you got you, you, your, your son there is right in the in the meaty part of all this stuff where the transition happens so how does he kind of feel about you uh, doing the dancing being on tiktok does he does he like kind of embarrassed by that or does he embrace that and enjoy it you know that's i get that question all the time and i feel like my answer is kind of disappointing because he's not on social media um we are keeping him we're trying to keep him off of social media for as long as humanly possible which i gotta say that's one good outcome from from corona and covid is that he's not uh he's not exposed to this stuff i think that, that he would be already at this point um so i don't think he's embarrassed by it yet but i i know that's probably coming um i i don't know if he thinks it's cool either i i just don't think because he doesn't really have much of a grasp on on social yet so maybe in a year or maybe even in six months, that'll change. But as of right now, 
I don't, I don't really know, man. I've asked him that question before, and he's like, I think it's cool. He's a, he's a very laid back dude, um, and he's kind of hard to read sometimes. But yeah, his his answer is, I think it's cool. <laughs> so there you go. Well, yeah, I listen. I give you a lot of credit for doing. I mean, I'm like one of these dads. I'm a dancing dad in the kitchen making dinner, something like that. But never, but to put yourself out there the way you've done, that, that, that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know to to get a chance to do that and be successful at it. Now, how about as far as discipline goes, Nick? Uh, what type of disciplinarian are you as a dad, and is that different than the discipline style that you grew up with? Well, yeah, I'm I'm different, but you know, I I I know you're a sports guy, and um, there's a good quote that I heard a long time ago that uh, a coach can't coach every player the same, right? You gotta figure out what works, what motivates different people. And when I heard that quote, even you know, 10, 12 years ago, I, I, it stuck with me. So what what my dad, um, his tactics that worked on me, which I had, a, um, my dad's unbelievable, uh, do not work for my son and I wouldn't expect them to. Um, and it's also a different time period, you know, so things have changed. Um, but my son is very, he is very, when I was his age, I was much more, much more kind of immature, I guess, you know, I was definitely just, just very boyish. Uh, he's kind of a, he's, he's kind of a thinker, you know, he's very kind of wise. So my attack or my approach with him is I don't necessarily, um, I don't necessarily finger point. I try to guide, you know, I just, I just kind of say, Hey, what do you think your, your best option here would be? You know, do you think you'd rather take do these chores now and get your 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 video games in later or vice versa? And I try to approach it that way. You know, I try to give him options and, and make him realize that, um, you know, he's he's 100 percent responsible for um, he's 100 percent accountable for, for what he does when he does it. Yeah, well said. Yeah, I, I, we use that. Uh, I got four kids myself here. We use that that uh, technology as a carrot to kind of dangle in front of them to give. It, they'll they'll do just about anything to get some more game time. Forget about like the old school allowance, five dollars for mowing yeah. the lawn. They they much rather a half hour hour in a video game. I mean, it's. I'm so glad you said that because we've tried to motivate them with money. And again, I don't think, you know, because they don't see the money these days. They're like, right. Yeah. man. Unless unless the money comes in the form of like a uh, a GameStop gift card or something like that, so <laughs> they can buy more games, you know. That's that's one hundred percent right. What what would you say? What would you say, Nick? Are the top values that you're hoping to instill in your son growing up? Oh man, you know, um, I'm wearing this shirt here, Saint Sinner Saved, and um, I'm really trying to do my best to just provide him with a good kind of uh, foundation. You know, I mean. Um, there is a quote from the Bible. I don't want to get like religious, you know, uh, but I think it's a quote that everybody can can pull from. And it's it says, if you give your son or your kid a good foundation, they'll always kind of find their way back, even if they even if they veer off the path. And like I said, I'm staring down the barrel of junior high and high school and college. These are those these are those years that people tend to veer off the path. So. You know, my goal is to just get him uh, a good foundation that he can always kind of lean back on because that that is one thing that my parents did with me that worked. And I think it's a good thing to do for him as well. Yeah, I love that, Nick. I'm right there with you. My oldest is starting high school this year. So we're just about to hit all these things, too, with driving and dating. And they're going to be introduced to drugs, alcohol, the whole bit. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a faith-based person myself. I keep God first in my life, too. So uh, I'm happy to hear your comment on that. Do you, ha do you have like a – is there a, a best dance that you've done? And is there one that has completely fell flat? Do you have like a go-to dance and one that you'll never attempt again? You know, it's, fun it's funny. I, I give this a lot of thought. and. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound like super, super pompous or arrogant, but I got to tell you, man, I, I'm, a, I'm one of those guys that just puts my head down and I like to plow forward and not really reflect a whole lot. But I've had a lot of I've had a lot of dances with a lot of success and I keep waiting for the one that, you know, make people hate me. Um, and that hasn't happened yet. So thank you know, thank goodness. I don't know if I had to pick my favorite one, it, it would probably have to be, um, gosh, you know, I did, I just did one with this, with this other guy named Mufasa 
who dances and um it was very well received and i liked it because you know we, we were both able to to spread both of our messages of kind of positivity and then to be honest with you this very last one that i did i loved it i was i danced along with a guy who was playing the electric violin and it was so different and and, and new for me i loved it not a huge maybe like success on views um but that one so so far has had the lowest view count but you know we just we just posted yesterday so uh those are my thoughts on that my go-to move i think is probably i mean these days it's got to be the whoa all the all the kids ah, hit the whoa so when, <laughs> when you do that they lose their minds especially as a 36 year old person with gray hair well, what would you say is a Instagram versus TikTok? What's the be what's the better engagement? Where do you get uh, where, where do you see more engagement, or is it about the same? You know, um, Instagram is is probably where I've been most successful. That's where I get the most engagement and views. TikTok is a is a whole different beast. That thing just came. It's like a phoenix out of nowhere. <laughs> kind of last year, I, at first I had like scoffed at it, like what is this, and then. Gosh, in January, I go, all right, this is a thing, you know, and it's got its own little community there. And so I haven't had the the success in TikTok that I have in Instagram. My 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 fan base there isn't quite as loyal, but I'm working on it. And um, and we'll see. I mean, you know, TikTok's got its road cut out for it. It, it could be, be banned um, here in who knows the next day or two or whatever President Trump wants to do. Um, but I got to tell you, I do, I do, I am decent at reading patterns and trends. And I think that's the next, I mean, it already kind of is the next big thing, but I think it only gets bigger from here. So I think if, if anyone watching wants to capitalize, uh, on a new social media platform, I think adopting TikTok now rather than waiting would be advantageous because it's easier to gain followers when a social media platform is new rather than waiting till it's already been established. Like TikTok is kind of like Instagram was back in 2012, you know, I mean, at present day. So that's my take on it. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I'm going to put the links to all your um, all, all your accounts uh, in the description of this podcast episode so my listeners can check it out, see all the dance moves, see what you're hitting in over there. What's next for you, Nick? What kind of goals or plans do you have here for the future? Where are you planning on uh, scaling this up or building it or what do you got coming up? Yeah, I'm, I, I actually signed a contract about a year ago. It's a three-year contract for to stay as, a, as the morning meteorologist at, at Fox 46. So in October... I've gone through one year of my three-year contract. So at that point, I'll have two more years. And and my goal is to just keep doing what I'm doing, you know, keep um, keep trying to gain followers and and see what happens from there. I mean, I absolutely love my job as, as, a, as a meteorologist, um, but you never know. The internet's the great equalizer. There could be an opportunity uh in the future that makes my life go in a different direction and um we'll see man i'm one of those guys that i very much like to flow with the current i don't try to swim upstream so um i, I just kind of let things happen and, and and try to go with whatever whatever seems to be the right move so we'll yeah. see i'm not going to try to force anything because i know when when you get into that mindset everything goes haywire yeah, very cool. All right, last thing I'm going to hit you with here, Nick. I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for the new dad or for that about-to-be father who's out there listening? I think I think it's important for a new dad to um, not look at parenthood as a whole. You know, when you first get in there, it's, it can be overwhelming. And like I was saying, I was I was already jumping to, like, tween years. And, oh, my gosh, how am I going to handle buying a car? It's going to be so – you know, take – Parenthood is, is just a series of stages, you know, so if you're overwhelmed in one stage, you know, it's, that's just a tiny snapshot of your life. So ride it out, you know, just do what you can to, to do your best and make it to the, to the next stage. You know, you've got newborn, infant, toddler, and they're all, they're all different. They're all challenging, but they're all awesome. And so just kind of, just kind of take it in steps. And I think um, that will definitely be, that will definitely help. It definitely helped me, so I hope that helps you. Hey, last yeah. thing I want to say is to you, you're awesome. When I saw your email come through, 
Uh, I was like, I have to do this podcast. Congrats on all your success, man. I see you're just, you're number one all the time. And uh, I can see why uh, you get the big names that you do because you are good at doing this, man. So thank you. Well, Nick, I, I appreciate that. I love the message. I think you're a first class father all the way. And I got to say thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. Anytime, man. Anytime. Have a good one.